So, good evening and welcome. It's time for something different this time around. We are going to go through some spin and goes. And I think that today is going to be a good day to start doing uh, something like through the stakes. So we are starting with $1 spin and goes. And with spin and goes, we are going to we are going to see that the price pool isn't going to be always the same. Like our price pool is going to fluctuate. And unfortunately, this time around, both of our games that started are starting with the $2 price pool. I'm also not going to take a lot of games because these are three player games. So these are going to be quite quick and require quite a lot of action. So like if you are normally playing Let's say you are playing MTT sit and goes, and if you are normally playing something like 10 tables, I, I can't recommend more than four tables of these. It's going to be, these games are going to be really quick paced compared to pretty much anything else except heads ups. In here, I think that with uh, seven, we are having enough equity and in here, it's actually, I think that it could be a spot to value bet the river. And these are, these are sit and goes still. I don't believe that my opponent, it's, it's a hard spot. He has bet three times in a row. Actually, I think that he's going to have a better hand here more often than not. Generally players in this, in these lowest stakes, spins are going to be they are going to be really strong if they are going to bet for three streets in a row so good evening brucoli good evening danita good evening marcus Y. good evening deia good evening nick benisofani good evening virpa good evening eki so there should be plenty of plenty of us here today that's really nice to see in here even though our hand is not that great anymore, when our opponent is just min betting, we can't we can't make it that hard for for our opponent. All right, we can't give that much respect to our opponent that we would fold against just min bets even when we are having only a bottom pair. We don't get any respect, so we don't get any folds. So with weaker hands that we might flop well, we are we are switching to a, to a more limpy strategy. In here against a mobile player, I think that shoving is going to be the best equity move. And as Marcus Y says, the music is awesome or well, why? This is Marcus Weiss music, so it's awesome, of course. In here, I think that it's going to be a spot for a small value, but I think that we are going to get called with a king or a... In these games, there is no ICM, so in this in this spot, I think that we need to call with, with pocket sixes. Like, we don't need to be ahead of our opponent. If we are flipping here, it's okay. Uh, our opponent limps, we are going to be ahead of his range, so... And Danita says that sometimes I'll add a spin or two at the end of my session when I start to drop tables. That's a good idea because these games are going to be, are going to be pretty much the quickest. Uh, Kale, I'm not betting 5-4 off on 5-jack-jack. It's going to be close in a way. If we would have had a better five, it would be it would turn it more to towards a bet there, I think. With a weak five, I think that checking is going to be the better equity option. As we are still going to have have quite quite a nice showdown equity. Against a player that opens almost every hand, we are going to also defend really widely. In this case, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to turn this hand into a bluff since our opponent shouldn't 
like on this kind of a board our opponent is really hard for our opponent to hit anything so and checking or shoving the ace four off in right table preflop it's going to be it's <laughs> It's interesting. This is interesting if something that our opponent don't mean don't bets us here. If he bets big on uh, on the river, this is not big. I think that then we are not going to. Still, we are having we are having the nut high here. I think that we are ahead of him often enough. Oh, he had a nine, so. Probably everything happens too quickly once again. And with ace four, it depends on the stack size. Like if we are with something like when our opponent limps, if we are with close to 20 big blind stack size, it's going to be hard for it's going to be hard for us to do it profitably. And Virpa missed the intro. That's sad. But there are, I think there will be a nice animation for each one of our coaches. So, but the music is going to be the same. So. Actually, should we bet here? Probably not. We are having enough showdown equity for here to just check it with a pocket pair. I think one problem that players in general have when they are going coming to these spin and goes is going to be is going to be being aggressive enough and thinking about the wide enough ranges in these games. Like in these games, the ranges are going to be quite wide with what ranges we are playing and what our opponents are playing and it will require a bit of a different like if you are playing something like nine max sit and goes previously it's going to be pretty hard and in here i'm going to just bet as big as i think that i can get value if my opponent is having any in here we are getting really great odds we are having okay hand but when our opponent seems to be uh a loose passive player i think that we are we are not going to play it profitably out of position mm. we'll carry on on the left side and turn it into a bluff in here probably i should be star i, I should be betting way more way more on the right side table as my opponent seems to fold quite uh, quite uh, quite a few times on the flop so perhaps or probably i should be starting to bet more more against my opponent as a bluff there still as it's going to be like when you are playing spin and goes it's usually that you are going to have really a, only a few hands on your opponent so you don't have a lot of you don't have a lot of fancy stuff to base your you don't have a lot of fancy stuff to where you can base your base your actions on data so in these games i think it's going to be most profitable trying to find out what works what what works on on the whole population in here we are going to have too too good of a draw then there's only a question on on should we ship it here or should we just try to our opponent has has been betting with such a small sizings that draws are going to be i think draws are going to be really or we are going to get priced to draw pretty often so 
it's going to be also uh, also a consideration on if our opponent carries on betting small. I think in here our opponent is likely ahead of us. In here, turn it into a bluff. And that wasn't that wasn't smart. And as I said, these games are quick. You are going to have only a few moments to act and trying to explain spots and making decisions isn't going to be isn't going to be easy even with two tables. Probably going to probably going to start thinking about thinking about explaining less and acting more. And Kauris says that stream works well, more coffee. Yeah, more coffee is probably an answer. Feeling a bit rusty with these pins, so... It's something like a small pocket pair, we could even shove it here. I just think that when two of our opponents have limped here, it's going to be... Best equity option is to raise. And yeah, as Kalyan said that I had a nice stack to shove, I'm just completely flustered with the speed that my actions... I was thinking about right table, then trying to get back to the left table and remembering the actions. Actions and doing an action in less than a second isn't going to be the most... isn't going to be the most profitable option, let's put it this way. And if I had a nice stack to check shove with uh, with the spade flush draw against the against the loose passive opponent, I should have taken it. But I don't even remember the hand anymore, so I didn't use a lot of mental energy to that table. So now I'm trying to focus more on now I'm trying to focus more on being quicker with my actions. So. And yeah, normally I have played these games, I have played something like six to eight tables at once, but trying to explain stuff, you are going to get more flustered if you are trying to explain stuff and play at the same time. And as Kauris is trying to screw with me here, as I said from the start, we are going to do this as through the stakes. So we are starting with we are starting with lowest stakes that are available and we are working our way up the stakes. And I'm actually happy if, if these games are like, if this is what happens in these games, like it's going to be okay for me if I'm getting the $2 price pools at these $1 spin and goes. It's going to be okay. And I think my game asked that if it's going to be okay to shove the smallest pocket pairs. It depends. It depends. When we are having when we are having like 25 big blinds, I think that it's going to be plus EV to shove even the smallest pocket pairs. Because there is no ICM, so there is no way our opponents can add pressure. Can add pressure, so and also we are like even against tight ranges we are going to be in nice shape so there is probably like no ranges that our opponents could call to make it minus ev it just depends depends on the player that how much edge do we think that we are going to have against them them post flop one option would have been would have been to shove this one pre flop And Kubas that are spin and goes like bingos. In a way, these are mixed lottery and poker. I think that these are 
If these are a nice idea, all in all, like in general, I think that these are going to, these are a nice idea. And this is probably the, in my, in my opinion, this is probably the, this is probably the best way to play tournament poker on a mobile phone, because these games are going to last for such a short amount of time. In here, even when small blind opens and and we are we would be in position and it's going to be just one quarter of the pot. But with seven do suit, it's just going to be so crappy. It's just going to be so crappy, so we can fold like the crappiest hands against uh, against a small blind race, especially in these games where people are not going to raise enough from the small blind. 8-9 off, it's, I wouldn't hate opening it. I think that it's going to be slightly better. Slightly better not opened. Probably should have done just one table of these and played better. In a way, it's also annoying that I'm going to have these times that there is no hands going on for me, and then there are stuff that when I need to need to be acting on two tables at the same time. If we are not playing 9-8 off, we are definitely not playing queen-6 off. And Virpa says that about small pocket purse, if, if you look at it with simple chip EV, yeah, you can shove them plus EV. Although it's going to be a variance rich game, your range is going to be capped and good players can pick that up. Yeah, but even if good players are going to know that you are shoving, you don't need to balance the range. Like if you are balancing the range with something like ace x suited, like the crappiest suited aces, it's going to be it's going to be like a spot where opponents can't do anything about it like they can't like make it minus ev and like the whole variance of the thing like if we get called we are going to like if we get called we are going to get quite screwed but i think that the variance of the play will be lessened because there will be the variance of the game will be lessened by the fact that we are going to get called so rarely. And when we are playing, like when we are playing something like this $1 spin and goes, and we are going to see random players all the time, we are not going to we are not going to think about like now my opponents are going to pick it up and adjust to it like we are not going to have many hands on our opponents so it's going to be really hard for our opponents to pick it up in here i actually hate it a bit because this makes getting any value out of if we hit anything lot worse and probably should have watched this guy stack as well. I just thought that we don't want to shove against an opponent that has been so tight free flop and I didn't even actually didn't pay enough attention. This is probably a team today. Arnimetsa is not paying enough attention on the tables. And that's going to be like, that's going to be the suckiest team. Like we have had teams like betting from stealing actively and we have had teams like being aggressive, but if the team is going to be not paying attention, it's going to be the worst team ever. We are not going to be folding here. Just trying to get as much fold equity as I can here.
Uh, bottom pair is not going to be strong enough against my opponent here. And in here, just trying to just trying to do practically everything we can to get more fold equity. But against ace jack that hits a top pair, it's going to be it's going to be pretty much an impossible task to get him out of out of that hand. And again, a $2 game, it's okay. We are just getting the bigger ones at the higher stakes. And this is also like for the other way around. If we are getting open, and even if we are getting open with the larger stack size, we are in a game with no ICM effects. It's going to be really hard to make a non-profitable shove there against uh, against one player and then we get called with jack eight a lot games are good games are good and like if we don't have enough fold equity pre-flop we can always take it post flop and have more fold equity there And like I agree with Virpa in a way that it's going to be easier to balance and it's going to be harder for the good players to take advantage, but it's still going to be like, what's your good option of playing those small pocket pairs? Like, I think that the options are like, either we limp and try to set mine with those, then an up or like. It's pretty much that all the all of the options are open for sure but and we possess that yeah that people should know the downsides of the strategies they use I agree with you that people should know the downsides of the strategies that they are using but thinking about like that people are going to adjust to that it's going to be like even if you're playing higher stakes even if you're playing higher stakes spin and goes and like even if you're playing higher stakes spin and goes even if you're playing higher stakes spin and goes it will be really rarely that you are going to encounter an opponent that's going to that you are going to have a really big selection of hands on and like if you are having a spot that you are dealt pocket dealt a small pocket pair like like it's something like 30 combinations out of 1326 or something like that so it's like 2.5 percent of the hands that you are even dealt that and also that you are having the option to raise it's going to be that like if you are shoving if i need to think about it it's like if you are even getting one one hand out of 100 early game hands and i'd have to say that when i played a lot of these games i played something like i think 25000 total i think the most hands i had on an opponent was something like 800 or might, might might be over thousand but the amount of hands that you are going to get on your opponents in these games are is going to be way lower than any other game so even if you are having an imbalance in some part of your strategy it's going to be really hard for your opponents to pick up pick up on a systematic like pick up on a systematic unbalance there this sucks this majorly sucks it's like Finland playing football against the Faroe Islands 
I don't think that we can fold, but we don't like it here. And we are turning our hand into a bluff when our opponent checks, because I think that there are going to be, and, and when there are plenty of draws missing and our opponent is playing passively, I think that it's going to be really a lot more likely that our opponent is having a draw, and when the draws are missing, then he's, it's going to be even more likely that our opponent is having a, having a missed draw, and we can then, then put a lot of pressure on him. And loser on a table, the Avalanche logo. Nope, not this time. It might be Colorado's year this year around, after all. Let's give him some credit there. Interesting. It's really hard to believe on anything. Actually, yeah, he was just flat calling, so it's it's really hard to believe that he would have an ace here. Really hard to believe that my opponent would have an ace there, so... Then just trying to get maximum value out of it. And as I said previously, you don't need to think about balance that much because you don't have a lot of hands on any opponent. And Deja is saying that honey hit a huge multiplier. E even if I'm hitting a huge multiplier, like these are one dollar games. Even if I'm hitting a huge multiplier, you can't get, like, you don't get that warm with a huge multiplier in the $1 games. Okay, there's some NHL questions. So what is my view that is Rantanen going to stay up in, in the Colorado's team? I think that it's it has been really rare that Colorado has taken a young player young player up and just played nine games so i think that like for for the team and like what the depth is in wing for colorado i think that it's going to be rantanen is at least going to have a good opportunity rantanen is at least going to have a good opportunity of having having the whole season up and And when Rantanen is having a good opportunity of staying up all season, I think that it's going to be about, like, what I'm worried about that he hasn't gotten that much game time, or that much time time on ice, so that's a bit worrying. Like, if he's playing seven minutes, it's it would probably be better if he's playing on an a, a American Hockey League team with bigger minutes and bigger role than... than being with Avalanche, but playing just seven minutes a game. Crap. Crap, crap. And Kauris says that maybe Rantanen plays something like 20 games that this year. It wouldn't make any sense. Like, Rantanen plays less than 10 games or then he's playing the whole season up pretty much i think those are going to be the up of those are going to be the chances like grantanen is not going to play more than 10 games without getting injured because like with the nhl collective bargaining agreement in finish there is a clause that if player plays for more than nine games or player plays 10 games or more I think I think it's 10 games or more then they will be 
if they are playing 10 games or more up in the NHL team, the NHL team burns a whole year out of their contract. So like when they are now having a three year entry level contract, if Rantanen plays nine games, gets sent down, there is still like there are still going to be years left in his contract. So the entry level contract contract slides when you are playing less than when you are playing less than When you are playing less than nine games, then the team is going to get to keep the player for longer time. So it's going to be for, I think there were, when I counted, there were like six players that are drafted this year that have stayed for their NHL teams. Like Jack Achel, Connor McDavid, Rantanen, I think Dacha, Chakha. So, and then there were two players from second round. And Cody says that Rantanen is a mystery player. I don't think that he's a mystery player. I think that he's a, he has a good chance as he's defensively responsible, he's strong and and he's big enough to play the NHL game. Yeah, let's turn this into a bluff. I think that we are going to going to fold out some of the eights, fours and threes. So there will be enough weaker hands that will get to fold out by betting there. Uh, even with the middle pair, when there is one player betting, another player calling, I think that it's not going to be that profitable to carry on. When there's queen on a board, and, and it's going to be quite likely that our opponents are playing with the ranges that are going to consist of a lot of queens. Going for broke here for sure. I don't understand re-raising the flop with Jack High there. Like it's a bluff for sure, but then again, I'm probably not going to fold enough to make make the good bluff for him. And and I was talking about the Rantanen that I don't think that he's a mystery player. I just think that people are going like the year, the year that he was drafted, people are already talking about the next, next superstars. Really nasty spot. We are having pretty much the not worst hands. And then, then it's just a question that can we make our opponent fold anything of value there like any or like can we make the, our opponent fold enough of those higher can we make our opponent fold each uh, more than enough of the higher higher highs that didn't sound good but the better high card hands, let's say it this way. Perhaps that's the better way to say it. Out of position, small ace, our opponent is really aggressive. I just think that everybody in Finland were, were just waiting for Laine and Puljujärvi. And not thinking about that there is a, there is a draft going on even for the previous year. I don't believe for a min bet for a moment here. And Kauris says that like there, this is crazy that the first draft pick hasn't made anything, but there's just only two games. The season is still young. And we have played, I think, 10 games, and every single game has been a 2x game. So you might 
seem to wonder that these games might suck because you are playing paying like 33% of rake for every game because you are well, not 33% rake but like 11% rake per player because you are only having the price pool of two times your buy-in. It's just going to be that we have been quite unlucky with the price pools thus far. But it's the same. As I said, this NHL season is still young and also our session today is still young. So, But if we are seeing like this kind of a this kind of a luck with our draw it's going to be really hard to make any money in these pins like when we are going to see only the 2x games it's going to be really hard to it's going to be really hard to make any money and these things will happen and these things will happen more than in any other any other game Perhaps MTTs you are having the same kind of uh, additional variance in the games. And Kalyon says that so how often it should be something else? It should be more often than one in four. And now we have, I think, 11 or 12 started games. And we haven't had a single one over. And when we are having the six high flush here, I'm going to bet a bit bigger because we need to be afraid of every heart that comes our way and there will be like if our opponent is having a king or a ace of hearts they are going to go for broke with it so and this is pretty much the worst card that can arrive And the worst part of it is that we don't need to be right more often than 20% of the time, like, so like one in five. But the problem, and the problem is that there will be players that are also turning non-hard hands into a bluff here, and also they are like, I think that they are like value betting even weaker one-card flushes, even though that makes no sense. They are like playing the video video poker games that are like like in every every gas station that there is a video poker game that when you are getting a flush you are always winning a certain amount of money but in poker if you are getting a flush you don't get any money of money out of it and this is like with real poker you don't get any money for for hitting a nice hand but you also need to have a better hand than your opponent or you need to bet your opponent out of the hand In here, I think that trying to aim for a cheap showdown is going to be pretty pretty much the optimal strategy here. And Kaleon said that he obviously hit uh, straight with King 10. Yeah, I have seen those as well, but I just don't see that we can call with call with six high flush there because I think that we are going to get owned too often. Our opponent C bets. I don't think that there are going to be enough opponents going for a for a multiple barrels when it doesn't change anything without having anything here. Could have also raised the flop. Our opponent shouldn't have much here. He still caught the. He still caught the flop. So and the four is a, is going to be one of the one of the bad cards for us. There are there have been draws as well. So we will get some of the better hands that are like the better draws too. Fold there, I think. I think that I would have value bet the king check on the turn. 
in in a situation where in a situation where we would have a, a heads up bot, I think that value betting king jack would make make a lot of sense. But with a three way pot, I don't think that it it makes that much sense. Like in a three way pot, I would accept expect especially without any especially with the wor worst position on the table even when op our opponents have checked the flop that they're actually like value betting will make some will make sense there as well and i i need to stop daydreaming because i can see my time bank just floating away Having a session on a time bank balance of one second is, is one of those crappy moments. Then it's like king nine, it's going to be strong enough against the general opponent, I think. It's not going to be a spot where we are going to be completely like but it's still going to be a spot where I think that we are. We are having enough equity to call his 13 big blind. King six is like pretty much the bottom of my range that I would open here. And when we are seeing a, a bet and a re-raise, we know that with middle pair, we are not going to be in a, be in a good spot. Probably limping would have been better on the right side. Frustrating, frustrating in session in total. Just seeing too many mistakes in too too short amount of time. A hard one mental game wise. Wow, just wow. Our opponent hasn't bet a lot. And when he bets, he bets three check or three check suited. Actually, like from expected value point of view, uh, shoving king seven suited against a guy that has bet like three hands out of ten from the small blind isn't going to be the smartest move either. So. Okay, we are getting our first bigger, our first bigger opportunity. And as I have said before, that in these games there are going to be, like, it's going to be a lot about thinking about ranges that are going to be plus EV against the whole, like the whole player pool. But there will still be there will be a lot of difference between different players. So, it, like, HUD is going to be most useful in classifying the players, but you don't, you shouldn't expect to get a lot of advanced stats going on. MTT break for eight minutes. Now we are going to get more games going on in the eight minutes. We are going to play like three games on average. Min betting there is going to be probably the one of the stupidest moves that I can make. So I made it so you wouldn't have to try it.
as I said, this somehow this isn't uh, this isn't an easy session going on. Yeah, if I win this twelve dollars, we can have like one bu bus ticket to Pernu or something like that. So it's going to be like a vacation in the south or something. I don't think that it's going to be that much more sunny in Pernu than in, in Tallinn, but it's still in the south, so. Uh, we are getting three bet, we are having okay and we are having position, but an unknown player when he three bets his range is going probably going to be a bit too bit too strong for us to be calling there. Or to re-raise either. And we I think that one of us can go to Pernu with with like twelve dollars. I think that the cheapest buses are really cheap in Estonia. Uh, when we get three bet second time, it's going to be like No, you are not going to run me over here. Nikki Penisofani. Yeah, not choking today. It's easier to have a cheerful and fun session when you are playing well and you are winning a lot of games, but when you are not, then it's going to be a bit harder. Now we'll just need to hope for another $12 game. Did we even win the game? That's that's also one of a, one of the good questions. And Donita says that it starts lagging for anyone. It's not too bad for me. So I don't have any problems. In here we are going for broke for sure. I think that we are with two pairs, we are going to be ahead of our opponent a lot. What? We got race folded. That sucks. I think that there is the sense games, the main event for like one dollar or something. Okay. We won that six dollar game there. Like complete domination. <clears throat> but I think like the one dollar game that's the common sense game is going on today, so that's something that might affect. I bet twice in here, even though we are having some fold equity, because we should have even more, or we are having like showdown equity here, but we should also have a ton of fold equity, even against the small, small hearts here. So I think that our opponent should have really tight range that he can call us there when there are going to be four hearts on the table. And nice to hear Ariston76. Thanks for the comment. Yeah, King Queen suited is going to be strong enough. Did you marry the sweet girl by now? No, not yet married. We have been engaged for quite a few years already though, so maybe it will happen in the future. Maybe it will happen in the future.
I asked the sweet girl that would he would she like to would she like to join me for today's session, but nah. Not today, not today. Hurry up then. Oh wow, getting pressured by the Twitch chat to get married quickly. That was an interesting, interesting turn of events with 4-5 suited. And Kuba says that it's going to be even more difficult event for me. You have no idea. <laughs> what? No idea. I'm misplaying like on every front now. I'm even afraid to lean back because I think that the chair would break or something. Yeah, we'll need to win at least two of those $12 games so we can afford to get married. I don't actually even know. Do we need to get married in Finland or Estonia? Hard stuff to think about, hard stuff to think about. And Kaleon said that pretty much one of the worst cars in the in River in the A6 hand. Yeah. Having it easy today, having it easy today. And Nikki says that if you do not do that in Bahamas in PCA time, you haven't been in Bahamas when it's PCA time. Bahamas sucks around PCA. They have won a package, package to Bahamas for the ladies event a few years ago. It was when the it was when the United States players were still out, allowed to play. And there were like a ton of different games where people could, or free rolls that people could, could get the packages from. I think like one free roll was sponsored by a Vegas Strip Club or something. It wasn't the package that she won though. I think she was in a heads up for, for a package in that free roll. But it's like when we arrived to Bahamas, I had like one pair of one pair of long trousers and one long shirt. And I wore those the whole time I was there. It was really cold. And every place was really expensive there as well. Like I was an optimist that only shorts and t-shirts and everything nice to wear, wear around the beach. And then it was like, it was windy, it was cold. And like, it wasn't the paradise it's advertised to be at the time. And I think that the PCA is there because it's the cheapest time to get to Bahamas. And it was like, when we were there, there was, because of the wind and the cold, it's like there's a world-class water park in the PCA. Yeah, couldn't be there any single day because it was always closed because of the bad weather. So 
haven't done the nicest water park around. And Ariston, yeah, it's in, in January, so it's like the start of the year. And I think that we are like approaching the marriage license type of price pools in the seven dollar spin and goes and like a funny fact that for the seven dollar spin and goes the highest you can win in these is twenty one thousand and twenty one thousand is almost exactly four times the average uh the average amount that gets stolen on an average bank heist so you can win like four bank heists worth of worth of money in the seven dollar spin and goes and it's like in finland there is like a saying that you should go rob a bank no you shouldn't go rob a bank it's damn bad business only about five thousand dollars per per robbery i don't get how bank robbers how bank robbers stay in stay in business for long times. And Kaleon says that I think Bahamas is going to be so expensive that we are going to require those three thousand times once. Yeah yeah then then it's going to be bahamas time or not bahamas i want to go somewhere else like the caribbean islands are they are built for built for the tourism purpose and actually i should probably have bet here And as Nikki says that it sounds good, yeah, like Bahamas, it sounds good. And Mustaman Tori is underrated. Yeah, especially since it doesn't exist anymore. I think that there is a big shopping center where Mustaman Tori or Mustama Turg was before. But there are a lot of, a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I think there are like four or five marketplaces in, like four or five marketplaces in, in Tallinn. Oh! This is around the marriage license money here, so now we need to now we need to concentrate. It's an elusive six times our buy-in back, so and it was like the second seven dollar game we started, so it starts looking good. Or Kaleon, they should get some some kind of support from EU or something. Like it's not going to be a sustainable business without getting support from European Union or something. And Kauris is getting like. No. And they just said that we wouldn't even get a cup of coffee with that six dollars. Yeah, the six dollars in Bahamas, you can't get pretty much you can't get anything cheaply from Bahamas. Everything is either expensive or fucking expensive. So can't recommend the place.
going for a check race shall here if if I get the opportunity I think that he's limping either like a really wide range or then he's limping with a trappy range and and either way it's almost enough to renew my passport yeah but only if you pick it up from Finland it's going to get expensive if you need to get it from the consulate of Tallinn been there done that don't have the t-shirt yet but so I didn't win the first 6x game so still can't afford to get married and hello Nazgul are we nice to hear that the videos have been useful you should check out our forum as well I think it's going to be one of the best places to develop your game but Kauris there's the problem to like to have happy thoughts about these 6x games we need to win some of those games only at the level of hundred dollars and more if we are getting at the hundred dollars or higher or a hundred times the buying or higher level then we are getting like in the hundred dollar uh, or hundred buy-in games like in seven dollar games if we are getting the seven hundred dollar for the winner games then there is going to be like 70 bucks then there's going to be like 70 bucks for finishing in second or third place but in these games when even if it's a 6x game we are not going to get anything for finishing in second or third so it's not nice if we don't get any money yeah it's always like when when someone wins uh, when someone wins in the playoffs with a team that didn't win anything in the regular season it's like win the right games and that's something that in these games it might be really annoying that you might have like let's say that you might have for a day that you have played something like 300 or 400 games and your like EV adjusted chips would be somewhere around five percent ROI and when you are looking at your cashier it's like oh crap it's like if you are not winning the right games it's going to be hard it's going to be hard and like you can get pretty screwed in these games it's also it works both ways like you can run really bad in these games but you can also run really good like if there is someone that's a new in the games and is thinking about what games should he take if he's playing only recreation and not having a lot of time to improve his game and like is monetarily stable like spin and goes are going to be quite a good game for a player like that because for a professional player the added variance is a liability like for a professional player having a more variance it just makes it a harder game to play professionally but on the other way if you are a random player variance can be your friend because you can be a not winning player but still win in this spin and goes in the long run if you are just lucky with the draws and lucky with winning the right games now it starts getting serious now I think that even if I bink the 3000 times game in this in this spin and goes I don't think that it's even going to be enough in here I think that I need to bet fold this on the river even though I'm having a second highest pair there but when spades come through 
I don't think that there are going to be many worse hands that are, my opponent is going to turn into a bluff there. But like, do you know guys, wedding dresses are damn expensive. And on that bombshell, When this guy is saying, when this guy, guy is starting to chat to me, then I think that I need to perhaps slow down a bit on, on him and going to play more, more with the value oriented game. Because he seems to be quite, quite angry with me. But this is a nice value hand to just push in. Oh, Kaleon, you don't know what kind of a can of worms you are opening up here. Pretty much speechless, speechless right now. Pretty much speechless, speechless right now because this should be a poker stream, and we are talking about something like wedding dresses here. And now there is a blog post incoming on wedding dresses. It's good. Should be good. You haven't updated your blog anyway, so you know why so. Every post would be a good post. Yeah, there is like where where the deers are living in Pori. In Pori, they were they were looking for a couple to do a nudist nudist wedding. It was in the in the newspaper in in Rauma that they they were doing it, but like trying to find out a couple for a nudist wedding. When winter is coming, I just can't, I, I just can't comprehend the idea. Okay, we are not looking for style points. We are just looking to get more money in. Going for style points wouldn't necessarily be, be a bad idea. Uh, like what? What of his range that will call? Uh, there will be hands that are not consisting of a king here as well. There should be enough of those hands. Sucks. No balls, no calls. Now I'd have to say it looks quite nice. And Virpa says that saying that about rambling one and a half or half an hour on NHL. 
Yeah, but I think that we are having more people that are interested in ice hockey than than there are going to be play people listening interested in wedding dresses. And now I just noticed that on those spin and goes, when the spin is complete, it's glittering all around. Like, this is the nice and shiny prize that you have won. And it's like, when it's glimmering, when it's 2x game, it seems that Poker Stars is mocking me that. Be happy that you got even 2x game. Okay, we are probably getting a bit far ahead of ourselves here, but I think that winning that $42 game is is giving or moved us up in up in to be in profit on this session. And so it's always nicer to nicer to be in profit. And Deja is ha handling the Twitch chat, so thanks, Nikki Pe as well. You might have restored world peace with your comments. Should be more aggressive. That's actually something that was really close with the queen for probably should have called that one. Because I think that the general opponent would he would be tighter than Nash there, and there is like no antis in game, so so it's going to be a bit And we got some showdown equity, so no reason to bluff the river. Nikki Penisofani really likes his puns. And it's like Kaleon says that if running bad, just go to a higher limit and bink it. Easy game. Yeah, that's about winning the right games, but I'd say that I wouldn't recommend it. And Ariston76 asked for Sittari Keskustelu Ilta. Is that really a word? That is a word. Finnish language is a nice language and there will be a lot of long words. Like almost every word can be combined to form a longer word and there are some quite long combinations. Against an aggressive player, 4A suited would be a profitable to shove as well. Actually, like if it would be the first buying level, I think that calling that would be the most optimal because then we would have enough then we would have enough chips behind. And what a weird and wonderful language. That it is. Like the Icelandic volcano, Vatnajökull. Like Icelandic words, they are they sound funny, but they are still shorter than 
they are still shorter than Finnish language words. I think that I think that one of the longest words that's in use in Finnish is neliväri rotaatiopainokone. Which is quite uh, quite a long word and and then there are like what happens in the army. It's your title can be damn long. And Ariston 76, it's an easy job to learn. I think Finnish language is, is so weird compared to everything else. It's one of the hardest languages to learn, like right up there with the Mandarin Chinese, depending on the source on what's going to be the hardest language to learn. And that's also like for Finns, there are a lot of hard stuff to learn in English language and for example, Swedish as well. Like English and Swedish are related. But Finnish is not at all related. Finnish and Estonian are, are related, so there are going to be similarities. But like the ordering of words is something that's pretty hard for a Finn. Finn to think about. And writing is another problem. Yeah, writing is a problem. So now you got some long words. Lentokone suihku turbiini apu mekaanikko aliupseri oppilas. And I thought my title was long when it was tutka elektroniikka aliupseri oppilas. But like the virppas word is airplane, airplane, jet engine, assistant mechanic under officer in study or something like that probably the word order is also completely wrong it's probably something some else word ordering would be would be more like it in in english but it's just hard to translate and for kaleon it's about like also it's that's not a combination word that's like only one word it has no combinations in there it has just like i don't even know what they, what they are in finnish so it's going to be pretty hard to explain in english so like it's just one word that has been Just one word which has been mangled, let's say it that way. I could also have said bent, but that's probably even... But like Finnish is an expressive language. Like Finn can say talossa which is inside the house in English, which would require three words. Mm, not going to be strong enough. And that's like the same way that there's like combined those different additions that in English they are all, always a different word, but in Finland they are combined to be in the same same word. And rally English, Pirelli, black and round.
Well, Virppa, I need to get you in the on the stream to explain some of this stuff because it's it's hard stuff to do when you are playing poker at the same time and trying to trying to understand what's going on in the chat. And that's why in German there is a word for everything. They just combine. Yeah, I think German is one of those languages that is using a lot of word combinations as well. I think German is, in a way, it's going to be easier language to learn because it's going to be so similar. Like for an English speaker, it's probably going to be way easier to learn than Finnish because it's it's a related language anyway. King six. Even against a pretty passive player, I think King six is going to be strong enough. Uh, Nascar, are we heads up? Do you, don't you think sho shoving the deuces to sevens is ideal under twenty big blinds? In general, it is. Then there is another question. Did I not shove, shove it at some point? Depends on the spot. There might be some spots where it would there would be a more profitable option available than just shoving. But generally, like small pocket pairs are those that you can break the rules and shove them with a larger stack size, because those hands are going to have a have a really good equity if we are always seeing the those are going to be hands that are going to have a good equity if we are always seeing five cards. But those are also going to be hands that are going to have pretty, pretty flat equity distribution. So like all, on almost every board that or practically on every board that we are not hitting. Uh, practically on every board that we are not hitting a set, we are having like we are having a lot of equity against all of those times that our opponent hasn't hasn't hit the hit the higher pair but it's like when we don't know then it's always going to be harder to play the hand so that's why shoving those hands makes a lot of sense Okay, we are getting three bet, but we are in position. Our hand pretty much sucks. So that's one big of a problem. But when we are flopping trips and then finishing up with with a full house, it's like <laughs> the hand pretty much played itself. Yeah, as Kaleon said, that it depends. Like, if you are having an opponent that shoves really often, like he's only folding or shoving, then pocket sixes and pocket sevens and pocket eights are starting to make a lot of sense to. They're starting to make a lot of sense to just just min raise and let your opponent. Let your opponent put his money in with a wider range than he would against a, a shove. Pretty nice spot. Even when we are having a crappy flush draw, we can we can add a lot of fold equity to our game, our play here. This guy, this guy.
pretty majorly sucks playing against this kind of a guy that is always playing aggressively back at you on pretty much every flop, especially when you don't hit anything. Like, you would need to hit something to break him. Like, when he's playing aggressively back at you every single time, then it's just going to be a waiting game. Like, don't play with you until I have a hand. Frust just frustrating. I don't think the villain made a 1.5 five times. If a villain made a 1.5 times pot C bet, then I don't think that I'm going to get get that much fold equity. Might again be. A nasty spot once again. Just like having a tunnel tunnel vision. And tunnel vision pretty much sucks. Yeah. It's like the super user mode or something, or like getting all it that's that usually frustrates a lot of players when they are when they are against an opponent that always seems to hit on every board, like you know that your your brain says that they can't be hitting every flop, and but might be just that they are. Well. And Ariston says, like, maybe I'll use my time bank. I think that we have dated for between seven and eight years. Been engaged something like close to five years, four and a half years. These things are hard for a man. Hard. So, like, how much is using your whole time bank for from engagement to marriage? Pepe Rastaman says that how many spins you play in a day? The most I have played has been about a thousand. So, but I haven't played a lot of spins. I think these are my first spins that I have played since June. So. I'm a bit rusty with this. Please bear with me. I played a lot of spins since they were introduced to June. Then I just got frustrated with this. Like if you can think about think about playing a game professionally, I'd say that spin and ghost has been the mentally the hardest game that I have tried to play professionally. And if you lose four in a row, would you stop for a day? Nope. Like today, we started with getting only two X games, and I think we lost something like six, six games at the start. I don't think that stop loss is necessary if you are if you are playing good. But I know that I'm I have it good because they are still listening to the facts and not not trying to fix my wrong ideas during the stream. And Nazgul RV says that it's sure mentally tough, but the opponents are the worst possible. Yet the problem in these games are is even when opponents are really bad, the problem is pretty much that you need to have the four to five percent ROI to make these games grindable, to not have heart crushing 
hot crushing down swings and not require a, not to require a huge bankroll. So in a way, it's like these games are only lasting for a really short amount of time in hands. The stack sizes are really low, so you don't have a lot of you don't have a lot of When the stack sizes are really low, you don't have a chance to add that much edge on your opponent on a single hand. So, like, in these games, even when opponents are worst possible that are available in the games, like, I think that in $7 games, these players or opponents are worse than they would be in a $7 Hyper 6 Max on average, for example. But on $7 Hyper 6 Max, those games are quite grindable even if you are like just just over break even those are still going to be grindable with but these games if you are just over break even you are going to have such a bad time like you'll need to be and also the rake is higher in these games and not only that there's also like the lottery rake that you need to you'll need to beat And in $7 games, we can see that the rake is 6%. So it's like, if you are beating these with something like 10% edge, then these games are okay. So it's something like 55 to 60 chips. And Kalean said that rake games problem is, for example, in $30 games. I don't know how it is right now when PokerStars has banned the only tool to tool that has been used for game selection. I think that it probably would have been good for me since I didn't use the tool, so... But it's like, in these games, it's more like you need to beat 9-10% to rake, so... If you are playing these games professionally and you'll need to... And you can like you can run for 500 buy-ins under EV in 10,000 games. So it's like even if you are among the best players and doing like the 5% per game, you can still lose. Uh, you can still be break even or lose. Losing 10,000 games. And Pepe Rastaman, I have $180 bankroll, should I play $1 spins or $3? I think that that's going to be a really small bankroll for $3 spins. I couldn't recommend playing those with pretty much any edge. Uh, you can see on our forum there is a thread. They can probably link it to our chat on the mathematics of spin and goes. And Virpa has calculated there on what's going to be the absolute minimum bankrolls for different kinds of edges. And you would need to have a crap ton of edge to... I think that would be closer to like 80 or 90 chips per game. And we can see that this is a four times game, so this is an important game. Thanks, Deja. But like you should never go under under the Kelly's formula bankroll that's something that you should never do there is pretty much never never a point and i think when i used to play 30 dollar games they weren't too bad but it's just that in the long run you are going to i think that you are going to need quite a big of bankroll especially in the largest levels that there are right now
If there is something that I know absolutely nothing about, it's hunting. So you probably can't hear about hunting in here. But Mirpa, with around 65 chip EV, you can play with 58 buy-ins, but that's going to be the absolute minimum. So I wouldn't recommend that, but I'd say that even if you would have a long-term 65, 65 chip EV, I would still say that have at least double that. And there is no 15x, there was a 6x from $7, some $15, 10x would be nice, 3000x would be even nicer. I actually hit like twice the 1000x games, then I played for I think pretty close to 25,000 games, and I hit I didn't hit a single 100x or higher, so my highest games have been a few 25x's and crap. A, a few 25x's, I have never seen a 100x or 200x game. And I think Deja has played something like 10 to 15,000 spins. And she has never seen a game that's higher than 25x. Except those 1000x games that she saw me playing. But she has never had a higher, higher multiplier than 25x game. And Virpa, that, that would be the optimal point for bankroll growth. But if we are being truthful, everybody is overestimating their edge. So there is good to be some security and you can't completely freely, you can't completely freely choose your buy-in levels. And that's going to be a problem in a way. Like when you can't completely freely choose your buy-in levels, This is like, this would be a thin, this is a thin value bet, the thinnest of the thin value bets. And with, if you are playing with something like a full Kelly, then you would need to check your bankroll constantly because it will be really easy to play in a game that wouldn't make sense. Sense in a way of optimizing your bankroll growth. That should be a target for you, of course. So playing with full Kelly is also going to be way more stressful than playing with a larger bankroll. And especially if you are open, if you are starting up at the games, you don't know what your edge is. So it's going to be really hard for you before you before you get enough games to know what your edge is. This was unexpected, to say the least. Even getting the flush wasn't enough there.
I'm thinking that we don't have Gluggy either, so damn you, my game. Damn you. And Kauri says that you are losing to a higher flush. No, I didn't lose to a higher flush, I lost to a full house. And Nicky Pen is a funny, like in the future we are going to have moose links problems because new generation like you is not going to know about hunting. Yeah. I, I could agree with you that mooses can be a problem. I wonder, like, would there be sense to turn it into a bluff? Oh well, this was a $60 game and I had fun here. For the whole two hands that it lasted. Oh wow. That's, that's probably a spot where I missed the value bet. I clearly missed the value bet there. Nicky Ben is a funny Darn is too tired of spin and goes. I'm too tired of like playing badly. That's pro that's probably the We have a video on YouTube on how to play spin and goes, and this should probably go there with how not to play spin and goes. Too many mistakes, too many constant mistakes. Missing a lot of valuable spots that would be good bet spots. Not doing the smartest moves on most, on not on most hands, but like not playing optimally. I think that I'm still playing in a plus EV sort of way, but I'm not playing even even close to optimally right now. And it stresses me out a bit. I usually, when I do this kind of, kind of sessions, I would like to see, I would like to see myself playing well. Running well is nice, but playing well is nicer.
pretty pretty close Pro probably shoving would be a better equity option there Even though we are having multiple nice draws, I think that it's going to be better to just go for a check call. It's kind of a line. I don't know if on the river should we have should we have bet with the weak flush or let our opponent bet. And then should we even have raised? Lot of good options, lot of good options when we are having a really strong hand. I don't know, perhaps this should be about the last games for today. If you have any questions, you can write on the Twitch chat or you can write on our forums chat. We have both of these open on the top of me. And Nikki Penisopani, yeah, the worst feelings with poker is making mistakes. It's it's one of the worst mistakes or worst feelings. And that's one of the like there are practically two ways that I I might feel tilted in a way. It's when technology doesn't work. I really hate it when something doesn't work. Some part of the technology doesn't work like it should. I can get really tilted, especially if it doesn't work when I'm playing poker. And especially if I'm playing bad, technology doesn't work, like it's raining inside and there are like storm clouds on top of my head and everything, then it's, then it's not good. And also, if I'm making mistakes, it's probably the only way that I'm like stopping a session if I'm making too many mistakes in a row. And that's a mental game leak. For sure. Nikki says that is there any reason to play spin and goes? Yeah, for example, if you want to play tournament poker and you are only on your mobile device, these games are, are the not best tournament poker games you can play. I think these are the best mobile poker games you can play. Bar none. And one other reason is that if you if you don't have a lot of time to invest in poker development, these are these are fun and quick games that you can play, and you at least have a chance of making money, even if you are not even if you are not better than an average player. You have a better chance to make money in spin and goes than almost any other form of poker. So then Variance is your friend. Like, as I said, when Variance in the in one way, it's pretty bad for a professional poker player. Variance for a random poker player is, is going to be nice. Because if you don't have a lot of time to spend on your poker, if you are like playing, let's say you are among the, or you are worse than an average player. If you are playing six max hyper and you are worse than an average player and you are playing 3000 games, it's guaranteed. It's absolutely guaranteed that you will lose money on those 3000 games. If you are playing spin and goes, you have like, I think five, 6% chance of being profitable after 3000 games even if you are like a completely average player you don't have a lot of time to develop your game and also something like something like these games if you are playing like mtts and you are also really good at spin and goes you can improve your uh, session e efficiency like when you are starting your MTT session, you can have a few of spin and goes running at the same time. So that when you are starting your session, you would have your average table count up. And even if you are making something like 50 cents a table, it's still going to be money because you can make quite a few of those tables before you can get your scheduled tournaments to open. And also on the other end, 
if you are one tabling a long time, if you can also open three spin and go tables with the one table and you are making and you are making some profitable sum on those tables, it's it adds up. Yes, so Virpa says that it's not even that bad. But Callan, if you are playing professionally, you should always you should invest time in mental development and developing. That's one of the parts that people are not like even understanding that it's a mental game league. Like players are saying that. I don't tilt a lot. I can always stop playing when I'm feeling bad at the tables. And then they don't even understand how much money they are losing because they are shorting their or they are stopping their session short when they are starting to feel bad to not tilt on the tables. Even though they would still make money, uh, still make a lot of money if they would just play enough, play their normal session. This is going to just be too good of a spot to just bring more money in the table because there are so many queens and kings type of hands. So we should always get our money in good here. And Virpa says that so in a way Napurintina isn't all that bad. Like if you are playing MTTs, probably the best thing to do would be to be a really good cash game player because then you would could also play cash games at the same time and improve your session efficiency that way. But like these games are way closer to what a tournament player does well than what a cash game is. And one of the like biggest things that biggest mental switches that need to be flipped for these games is to not think about ICM. Like it has taken me something like two months to get the thinking about ICM back into my game when I so actively tried to disable everything, everything thinking about ICM in my game, in my game when I play spins. And Virpa, yeah, if you are playing like different game, it's probably something similar than if you are playing like two different sports. When like your the season for the other sport, that's a winter sport, stops and you are going back to your summer sport, you are going to feel sore at places that you didn't feel sore with the winter sport. And the same in the other way. I think it's the same with poker that if you are playing different games, it's like they are tickling the different parts of your brain and they are making so you are going to face different leaks in different type of games. Uh, Kalyan asks that do you think your MTT game might have improved from spin and goes GPV thinking? Uh, partly for sure, yeah, but it's always it, it's also going to be so different because the ranges are going to be so different in spin and goes that they are going to be in MTTs. I think my sit and go game has improved also somewhat at the late stages because of the ways you need to get your edge in these spins. Like you can be a bit lazier in you can be a bit lazier in general sit and goes in certain spots and you don't need to like get all of these spots but in these games when there are going to be so few hands and so much rate that you need to overcome then it's going to be even 
it's going to be quite hard for you to it's going to be quite hard for like the amount of mistakes you can make is going to be so small so small for this to be a grindable game If I would have something like 9-6 and there would be a 6 on the table, I wouldn't turn that into a bluff, but I think that when we are having a 3, it's virtually guaranteed that we are going to have two overcards to that, and our equity isn't going to be that good, good with a 3. So I think these two games are going to be the last games we are going to, going to see today. And my game says that I think spin and go players are a little sado masochistic people. I think that you can even remove the sado. It's it's more of straight up masochism. Or that's what it feels sometimes. Such a great spot for getting getting more money in. And such a hard time for our opponent to have a better hand there. But like playing spin and goes professionally, these games are valuable. If you are having like endless time, endless bankroll, these games will be really profitable. Like if you are having an endless amount of games. But if you are not, then these games might be might be quite hard. I think that this is going to be against this kind of a player, this is going to be a profitable call. He doesn't need to shove that much for for it to be a profitable call with King 7. And when we see 9 7 suited, it's going to be almost guaranteed that he's going to shove enough. Shove widely enough. But like I understand why these games are enticing because if you, for example, if you can play four tables of spins or if you can four, play four tables of something else, from tournament poker, it's really hard to get the same hourly from any other game than spin and goes. To be even close would be, would be really hard. It's just like how long time you need to for your edge to apply. And for these games, it would make a lot of difference, for example, if there would be a deal making available for these games. It would make a lot of difference to, to how these games would be, would be running and what would be the variance if you would just like, if you could split the winnings in, in the biggest multipliers, because that would help with the variance a lot. But this was the last game for today. Unfortunately, I didn't mark any hands today. So we don't have a hand to look through, but it was really nice to seeing a lot of you on the chat and uh, it was really nice. We had, we didn't have a session last Sunday, so really nice to see so many of you here today. Thanks for everybody watching. Next week we might have something special in the weekends, depends on if we can get everything working, everything done. If we do, then we can we can have something special so follow our forum to see if we if we do and and then at least i should be doing a session next sunday so there's always room for ideas on what i should do during next sunday but on that note it's time to end this today and if you are going to sleep have a good night if you are still playing poker may this be a winning day for you bye